subject tonight very quickly why Jesus takes naps you may be seen in the presence of the Lord why Jesus takes naps on last Sunday uh, the Holy Spirit really uh, ministered to us in a very unique way and I, I never apologize for preaching delivery I am um, not a novice anymore so whenever I stand however I deliver the word it is God sent I make sure that I don't allow personal feelings to get wrapped up in the presentation of the word of God and last week uh, I spoke to you in a very fatherly manner and I thought about it today or yesterday and I thought about how a father sees his child in harm's way and he does anything he can because he doesn't want to see them die. And that's where the passion from the word of delivery last Sunday came from because whenever I see those who God has placed in my care in harm's way, I don't want to see them Die. So the Lord really dealt with us on last week. And on last week, we talked about in the message how we have become a church who loves the promise. We have become a church who loves the promise. We love the freedom. But we don't like the process. Yeah. And so we are very apt to shout and dance when we hear the promises of God and what the word of God can give us, but we're not very apt to mature enough to be able to praise God and give him glory while we're in the process. Yeah. While we're on our way to the promise, we have to be mature enough to praise him through the process as we do when we come out. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's what God's going to do for you in 2018. He's going to mature your praise. Yeah, because a lot of us, we dance real good when times are going good. When we got all the money we need, when you freshly got your refund check, when you just got paid from your job, you praise God real good until you feel like there's holes in your pocket. Man. Life has thrown you a curveball and sickness comes into your body. Now 
you don't know what to do. You're ready to throw in the towel. Uh -huh. So God says in 2018, what I'm going to do, I'm going to mature your praise. Now, you got to understand that the way he's going to mature your praise is to put you in even the more of a process. Now, I already know that that's not good news to hear. Nobody wants to hear uh, that in the year that I'm coming into that God is going to put me in some mess. Not, not too many people want to hear that. But the truth of the matter is, if you're going to experience a better life, if you're going to experience more from God, then you're going to have to go through more so you can handle more. Yeah. Uh, you've got to understand the kind of God that we serve. And I always tell you that God never brings opportunity to inactivity and God will never give you something that you're not ready for. And so in order for him to bless you and in order for him to make that vision list come to pass that you haven't written for 2018, he's going to have to put you through some stuff. You're saying, I want more money. So he's going to have to challenge you with what you have now. You're saying, I want a new car. He's going to have to make the one break down and see what you're going to do with the one you got now. He's going to have to challenge you on what you want in the future. You say you want more, it means you're going to have to go through more. I hope you all understand that. I hope you all understand that if you want more, you're going to have to go through more. Mark's gospel, very interesting gospel. Mark's gospel, very interesting gospel. And uh, many scholars believe that Matthew and Luke kind of cheated off Mark's paper a little uh -huh. bit. Uh, Mark's gospel, and it's accredited to John Mark. And when you study in the book of Acts, you find out that John Mark was one who was a co-laborer with Paul and Barnabas. But uh, Paul, the text says, sends him back home. I need y'all to hear everything I'm saying. He sends him back home to be with his mama because he said, you're not ready for this level of ministry. So you, you go back home to your, to your mama. And, you know, so many of us, we, we think that we are prepared for elevation. We think that we are ready for different types of ministry, but we're not mature enough to handle. Yeah. We're not mature enough to handle. And so the truth of the matter is our Paul should sit us down. Yeah. Our Paul should take away our ministry title because we're not ready to really handle when you still get upset over little things. You're not really ready to handle ministry. You, you know, you know, you, you. You still got a problem with other people. Yeah. You're really not ready yeah. for yeah. ministry. You're still trying to figure out uh, how I'm going to uh, handle ministry and life. You're not really ready for right. ministry. Right. And, and I mean that in a way uh, where you don't do any sacrificing for ministry, but you want uh, God to sacrifice for your life. That, that's a problem. You're, you're not really ready for ministry. And there's a truth of the matter is Barnabas got mad with Paul because Paul sent his cousin home. Yeah. Some of y'all got folk in ministry who are in ministry with you who will get mad at the ministry because you're their buddy and they don't like how you, wow. they think you've been treated, you know, and so y'all don't act like, you know, y'all don't know church folk, but you know that if you got real close with somebody in the church and they come to you with a, a story that they pulled out of their hind part and you will you will try to be on their side. That's right. You will try your best to make sure you got their back. I'm praying for you because you gotta you gotta understand and discern demons and stuff. Uh, but you know, you, you gotta learn that demons know Bible too. Demons know how to pray too. I just going through Mark. Mark's gospel, he, he has such a rapid pace grooms because he doesn't he doesn't have a pause here. He doesn't take time to talk about Jesus' birth. He doesn't talk, take time to talk about his early years of ministry, but he begins with his entrance in ministry. Mark 1 and 1, he says the gospel of the Son of God. He goes right into the ministry of Jesus Christ. Mark elevates Jesus by thematically describing him as a servant. Uh, that's what we got to understand. We got to understand uh, that Jesus was a servant. 
And if uh, uh, Mark says, I'm going to write about him because he was a servant. And if you want somebody to have something to say about you, you got to learn how to serve. Yeah. Oh, so you thought that you just had to get the title. You thought that you just had, you know, to get the lights, your name and lights. But no, no, no. If you want somebody to have something good to say about you, you got to learn to be a servant. Uh, it was Obadiah when they looked up his autobiography. It just says a servant of the Lord because it doesn't matter what I really do in ministry. It just matters if I serve. Can I tell you something? In the year of 2018, since we're going into the year of maturity, you got to learn how to serve and stop always trying to be served. Because yeah. some of y'all don't do nothing unless the church volunteer to pay your phone bill, unless the church want to pay your light bill, unless the church want to do something for you when you haven't even served. If you don't serve, I gotta move along. I gotta move along. I gotta move along. Mark, Mark's gospel is a very unique gospel. Very unique gospel. And what I love about it, what I love about it is how he really breaks down these parables of Jesus. Now, when I read these parables, uh, this, this, this really, this parable of the sower became one of my favorite parables instantly. Became one of my favorite instantly. Mark here talks about how Jesus is speaking in parables. And here he opens up chapter 4 talking about the parable of the sower, Nehemiah, because he says there are four recipients of the seed from the sower. Lord, I love it. Then he says there's four recipients of the seed from the sower. And he breaks it down. He, well, Jesus goes through, uh, he goes through the parable first, and they didn't quite get it. So he breaks it down to the disciples. So there's four types of recipients from the sower. And as I am the sower, I sow the word of God. There was Four recipients that received the word of God on last week and on tonight. Are y'all with me here? Uh, four recipients. One, the Bible says, is the one by the wayside. They're not really connected. And he says, when he sows the seed, some of the seed fell by the wayside. And those recipients uh, were so disconnected. Connected that it was so easy for Satan to just come in after they received the seed and snatch it from their life because they're not really connected. Uh, and then he says the second one, the seed fell on stony ground, uh, which means that it didn't have too much place to take root. And so it was very shallow. That is for some of you hyper Christians who... You always dancing, you always shouting, and you know, but when your emotions settle down, the enemy is able to take that word right out of your life because you're so shallow. You're just a church Christian. And you only receive the word of God when you're in the sanctuary and it's gone by the time you hit the door. You, you're very shallow. And he says the third recipient is the recipient who allowed the seed to fall among thorns. And the thorns started to crush the word of God, started to crush the seed. And so many of us... Uh, the word of God cannot settle in our spirit because struggles in our life and sin in our life and tribulation in our life is able to grow up and crush the word of God that's in our life. Then he says the last one, Lord have mercy, which uh, statistically is pretty much 10% of our congregation is good ground. And he says, when you sow the word into them, they will actually take the word, be able to swallow the word, no matter how strong it is. And they're able to swallow the word and change. Oh, yes. So Jesus, he starts out with this parable and then he moves to talking to us about faith. Lord have mercy. He moves to talk to us about faith. And a lot of us, uh, we got to make sure that we turn into individuals who can receive the word of God and allow it to land on good ground. 
Touch somebody and say, I'm good ground. Oh, yeah, yeah. When I receive the word of God, I'm looking to change my life. When I receive the word of God, I'm looking to do better. Uh, I can always tell, even from standing where I'm standing, who are the ones who receive the word on good ground. Because they are the ones who come to church and hold the preacher accountable. Uh, you see, some of you shallow Christians, you know, the stony ground Christians, uh, you are easily fooled because uh, the preacher just has to come and give you something, uh, something uh, that he played over, something to just tickle your ears because uh, you ain't trying to grow from the word so you don't take notes. Uh, so the same thing, he preached third Sunday last month, he could come back and preach it third Sunday this month uh, because you're so shallow and you don't, you don't, you don't receive the word of God. I can always tell the good ground because uh, they can remember the word of God and they come to church ready to take notes. Whenever I see people take notes, it just holds me accountable, Barrett, because uh, I understand I've got to bring something that's going to make them grow. Uh, I'm afraid of people who come to church. How you come to church every Sunday, but you don't want to grow? What What are you here for? You can turn on a praise break in your house if you come to just shout every Sunday. Why in the world will you come to church and not want to grow? And then you want to leave the church talking about, I just got to move. God is, God is calling me to another ministry because I'm not growing there. No, you're not eating. If you're not eating, thank you. You can't grow. If I'm serving the food, I'm cooking up the food. It takes over 15 to 20 hours to prepare one message. If, if I'm cooking the food and stirring up the pot and I feed it to you on Sunday and you're still in the same place next year that you were this year, it's because you ain't eating your food. Oh, yes, because whenever Mama sh shared something with us uh, that we didn't want to eat, uh, we take it off the plate, put it in a napkin, and put it in our pocket so we can put it in the trash can a little later. And that's what some of y'all do. Uh, you come in here, you take the word of God, uh, you shout and dance and act like you're fooling me. Uh, and then you go put the word in the trash can and go back to the life you were living. You ain't hurting me. Uh, you hurting yourself. Oh, yes, because... Uh, off his own food. Uh, I'm growing. I don't know about y'all. Uh, but I'm growing from the word of God. What God has been putting in my spirit uh, is not just for me to feed you, but to grow myself. Uh, would you ask somebody new? You ask them, are you even growing? So God, God, he says, and, and Jesus says in this text, talk about faith. So he goes to talk about uh, the growing seed. He goes to talk about the mustard seed. And he talks about all of this faith. And you got to understand that stress in your life is sometimes self-induced because of a lack of faith. Yep. That's tweetable. All right. I said stress in your life is self-induced because sometimes a lack of faith. Uh, some of you, uh, and that's what problem Jesus had. I'm going to I'm gonna kind of change your perspective on this text tonight uh, because the problem we have is uh, a lot of us don't have enough faith and God has to work a miracle. Oh yeah, we'll get there in a minute, but I got a deal here because uh, our lack of faith makes us not want to go through the process. Uh, one of the things that we ignore the most about life is process. I'm coming to a close. I smell a rib. We, 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 never, we never want to acknowledge or admit that process must be factored into our elevation. Can I tell you something? Process must be factored into your your elevation. Now, this word ain't for you if you're not trying to go to another level. If you're not trying to grow up, if you're not trying to get more, trying to really obtain your purpose, this word ain't for you. But for those of you who want to go to every single level, and as we say in the church, dimension, you have to 
go through the necessary procedures that will equip us to handle what God has for us. We must be prepared to do something in order to get something. Now, that may sound simple but complex because sometimes we don't possess the passion or the desire to go through what is necessary to get what we want. Oh yes, Moses understood that God would not allow me to be stuck here between some water and the enemy. Uh, but if I want to be delivered, I have to stretch out my rod. Okay. Paul said in order for me to reach the mark of the prize, I have to do something. I have to forget the past in order to reach for the future. I have to press. Joseph had two dreams. He went through 13 years of process. He went through 13 years of destruction that built him in God before he could have what God had for him. Abraham had to reach a certain level of trust in God. The, the kind of level, as the text says, that makes you laugh when you hear the promises of God. Job could not receive double what he lost so, uh, until he went through hell from chapter 1 to chapter 42 and then in Job 42 and 9 it says then the Lord uh, accepted Job you've got to deal with process before you can have what God has for you are y'all with me here so God speaks promise uh -huh. we deal with process and then we receive promise you see, you got to understand that name it and claim it sounds good to shout off of, but it doesn't necessarily mean receive it. That's right. That's right. That's right. Okay. I know the Bible says in Job 22 and 28 that we shall decree a thing and it shall be so, but perhaps decreeing doesn't mean receiving. Perhaps decreeing what you want means that you just start the process to get it. Y'all with me here? Yeah. Once the plan of God has been released, then we have to be prepared to buckle our seatbelts because process is about to take place. We want God to speak it and give it. But when God speaks the promise, he actually initiates the process. So whenever you hear God speak a promise over your life, get ready to go through hell. See, a lot of you get discouraged because you heard the prophecy, but you don't know that the prophecy just jump started all the hell that's getting ready to happen in your life. Before God blesses you with the promise he has for you, you've got to go through something so you can handle what he has for you. Sometimes, and in many cases, God doesn't speak to us concerning the process. He just simply speaks the promise. He told the children of Israel, he said, yeah, I'm going to give you a land that flows with milk and honey. But he never told them that on the way to that land, you're going to feel alone. You're going to be hungry. You're going to be stuck in the wilderness. You ain't going to have no water. He never speaks the process because for some of us, we will never leave our Egypt. Lord have mercy. The sad thing about Christians is we will never leave bondage if we knew the process to our freedom. God help me. So God says, I'll just speak the promise and you hold on to that. That's why faith is trusting God and taking him at his word because we would never trust him if we knew all of why we had to trust him. If we knew what we had to go through, some of us would never step out of the boat. Oh yes, oh yes. Now that's a hard pill to swallow, but God told the children of Israel, don't you worry about food because I'm going to give you manna every day. Every day he will allow manna to come down for the children of Israel. Well, they didn't trust God so much that they were trying to take the manna and store it. They, they were trying to take it and store it up for the next day. They didn't understand that the same God that gave you manna today is the same God that will give you manna tomorrow. No oh, ain't shout. Hear this. You see, you got to understand that we mistake the process because God sometimes never speaks the process. I have matured a little bit in this Christian thing, and although I have my ways to go, I have realized that many times immature Christians look at the process as an attack of the enemy because God never mentioned it. Wow. Wow. Oh, yes. 
just because God spoke a promise to you and you're going through hell, it doesn't mean that the devil is the author of your problematical situation. It may be God sending you through a process that will prepare you for the promise he has for you. That's why you can focus on the process itself, but you got to focus on the benefits of the process. Uh, those who don't embrace the process will never see the promise because they are swallowed up by what they are concentrating on. Yes. Lord have mercy. Uh, while we are busy rebuking the devil, we should take time to thank God for the situation because it is working things out for our betterment. Uh, I don't have time. I got to cut through here. Uh, in this process that we go through, we got to understand that God sends the process to mature us. Oh, but whenever God uh, does not get the results from us that he needs, he has to quickly pull us out of the situation. Now, many times when we see this text, we see this text here, and I'm not going to bring too much credulity to this text tonight, uh, but I want to exegete it just a little bit. In this text tonight, uh, uh, they are on this ship. Jesus says, let's go to the other side. So, they have a 13 mile radius in front of them. Uh, they have to go to the other side. Now understand that Jesus has taken all of chapter 4 to talk about faith. He's taken all of chapter 4 to talk about faith. And then at the end of chapter 4, he tests their faith. Lord have mercy. See, that's the thing you got to understand. That whenever you hear God teaching you, a test is coming. Oh, yeah. Y'all ain't shouting now. Oh, yeah. Because you got to understand that whenever God, the teacher, begins to sow a word into your life, there is coming a test soon. Oh, Lord have mercy. God mature my people that they learn when to shout. Uh, yes, because a lot of us, we love, we love to dance and shout about the testimony, leaving out the fact that you got to have a test. Uh, I know it sounds like a cliche, but you can't have a testimony if you ain't never been through nothing. How you going to tell me how to be successful in this area when you didn't survive the hell you were in? How in the world you going to tell me I need to dance through what I'm going through? And you about to slit your wrist when you were going through? You can't help me if you can't pass the test yourself. I'm coming to a close. Jesus says, let's go across to the other side. Now, here's the thing you got to understand. The Bible says that they get in the boat with him. And the Bible says, and other little boats were with them. Can I tell you something? You got to have somebody in your life who's willing to go through the storm with you. Oh, you see, they were not on this ship by themselves, but they were on them ships on the ship with other little ships around them. Oh yes. You gotta have people who while you're going through your storm, they surround you with prayer. Oh, Lord have mercy. They surround you with the word of God. They surround you with their testimony. You can't have people surrounding you who are gonna have a pity party with you. You gotta find the right people that will go through your storm with you. So he says, let's go through to the other side. And the great windstorm arose. And the waves beat up against the boat. So it started filling the boat. Watch this now. Jesus is in the bottom of the boat asleep. Problem one with the text is this. How in the world you going to call yourself a Christian and you get upset when you have a storm if Jesus is on the boat? Yes, sir. Yeah. Oh, yeah. See, the only reason you should get discouraged is if you ain't got him. Oh, yeah. Because if you got him, that means he's on the ship with you. Uh, you want to know, I got to close. You don't want to know why, real quick why Jesus takes naps. He has to take a nap because he already talked. And if he already taught, the teacher never speaks during their exam. So while you're in your storm, understand that he's just testing you to see how you're going to handle 
know what you're going through. I'm on my way to East Lex. Yes, sir. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, I got to make it through this storm. I got to make it. Ah, here he is, Jesus, in the bottom of the boat, asleep. And they go and wake him up here, and they say, Master, do you even care that we are about to die? Here's my problem. How in the world are you going to die? First of all, when he said, let's go to the other side. If you ain't at the other side yet, you can't die yet. Shake your neighbor's hand and say, neighbor, there's no way I can die here. Because this doesn't look like what God has promised. And if this doesn't look like what God has promised, I might as well keep on trucking. He told Paul, you go on the road. So Paul, when the viper jumped on his hand, he said, this don't look like Rome. And shook off the beast. He said, I ain't got time for this. Because I got somewhere to go. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm not where God has called me to go. Let me hear me flex. So I can press my way. He says, I'm not where God has called me to go. And if I'm not there yet, I might as well praise him in the midst of what I'm dealing with. Yes, sir. Shake your neighbor's hand. I said, neighbor, I'm so glad that what I'm in right now is not what God has promised. Which means I can't die here. I can't get discouraged here. I can't throw in the towel here. Because it's not what God has said. So Jesus is in the bottom of the ship asleep. And that's what Jesus is saying tonight. Is that some of y'all wake up Jesus for no reason. Oh, have mercy. He's on the boat. Which means you ain't going to die. Which means you can't throw in the towel. Which means you can't give up. You haven't made it to your destination. So you can't die here. And if Jesus is on your boat, greater is he that's on the inside of me than he that's in the world. Grab your neighbor by the hand and say, oh, neighbor, so glad that Jesus is on my folks. Stop waking him up because you're going through a trial. Stop waking him up because you're in a test. Stop waking him up because you've got some tribulation. If you're not where he called you to be, hold on. I said hold on. Hold on until you get to the place that God promised you you would get to. So Jesus sees that the disciples have failed the test. We get excited because Jesus got up and went up on the ship and said, peace, be still. I'm not getting excited because this is a miracle that he should not have to perform. Because the disciples didn't have enough faith to trust him. So Jesus had to wake up from his nap and come and take the storm away. Can I ask y'all a question? Is there anybody here that can say, Jesus, take your nap. I know it's just a test. Take your nap. I know it's just a trial. Take your nap. I know it's just some tribulation. Take your nap. No weapon. Hey, that's what the kitchen shall prosper. Take your nap, Jesus. Every tongue that rises up against me in judgment, God will condemn. I'm about to close, but I stop by to tell y'all. Jesus takes naps, it's cause he's testing you. So whenever it seems like Jesus is not answering, just know he's with you in your storms. He's with you while you're going through. He's with you in your tribulation. He's with you in your hardship. I know it may seem like he's sleeping, but as long 
long as he's here, as long as he's with me, I don't need to worry. I'll wait until he wakes up. And they that wait upon the Lord.
one who receives the seed on stony ground, where it's shallow. And I dance and shout, but lose the word after I leave the place. God has sent you a word. You don't have to hold on to it. You have to hold on to it. He sent you a word. You got to hold on to the word. Because after you leave this dance and shout, shouting atmosphere, you still have to walk through your storm. But you can't give up. You cannot throw in the towel. The reason some of you keep crumbling is because you only got this type of praise when you're here. You better learn how to quicken in your kitchen. You better learn how to dance in your bedroom. When you feel the enemy creeping in your house, you better get up and start rebuking him. My mama will walk around and anoint the walls and anoint the doors and anoint the bed and anoint our foreheads because we understood that the enemy's going to try to test us at home.